today we're taking a look at the latest CR Scan Otter from Creality. This versatile, high precision handheld 3D scanner stands out for its ability to scan a wide range of objects from small to large. And along with capturing clean, high detailed models, it's also able to capture the colours. So the scanner comes well packaged in a semi rigid zippered case, which is great for storage and transport. Inside the case, we have the user manual that has information on the setup, the software, and how to start the first scan. We have a black scanning mat that can be placed under small objects, a calibration board for calibrating the scanner, a lanyard that attaches to the scanner, small and large reflective marker dots, two USB-C adapters, a cleaning cloth, and the shoulder strap for the case. In the bottom of the case, there's a small OWL test model that we'll scan later on. The data cable that is about 2.1 meters in length, a USB-C cable that's used together with the data cable when using a USB 2.0 connection. And the last item is the Otter scanner. Taking a closer look at the scanner, it's well built and a fanless design with an all metal casing, giving it a solid feel. At the front, the scanner has a set of long focal lenses for scanning small items and a set of short focal lenses with a wider field of view for scanning larger objects. There's also the separate RGB camera to capture the colours of the model, and this has two built-in LEDs either side to help capture the texture and colour of objects in low light conditions. At the back, a ring light indicator around the edge of the touch panel helps with real-time scanning distance, changing colour to let you know when you're in range. And the touch buttons are used to start and pause a scan, or to adjust the exposure. Towards the bottom, there's a neatly designed recess connection port for where the data cable is plugged in. And on the underside, a small rubber plug covers a tripod mount, which is handy if you want to add a small tripod for a handle. The setup of the scanner is super easy. At the bottom of the scanner is a small tab to attach a lanyard. And as it's a high precision device, we want to use this to prevent any accidents. Next, the data cable is plugged into the back of the scanner and the small screw is tightened to secure. Now, if you're using a computer with a USB 3.0 port, the other end of the data cable is plugged straight into a computer and it's ready to go. Otherwise, for use with USB 2.0 ports, the included USB-C cable is also plugged in along the data cable and then both ends are connected to a PC. With the scanner set up, next is to install the software. The latest Creality Scan application is used to capture, edit and process the scan data. Opening the software, we see some basic information on the scanning process to help you get started, which is really good for beginners. And we can also get more information by clicking on the scanner model. Before getting started with any scanning, it's recommended to go through the calibration. It's a simple process that is completed within the software using the included calibration board. The scanner is moved around from different heights and angles as prompted on the screen, and this only takes a few minutes to complete. With the scanner ready, click on New Project. Then we have a few different options to select from. The object type, scanning size, feature tracking, accuracy, and if we're using a turntable. On the left side, we have the exposure settings, and by default, this is set to auto, but this can be changed to manual and adjusted on the scanner with the plus and minus touchpad. Just below that, we can rotate the scanner so it can be held horizontally or vertically. In the lower left, we can turn on or off the LED light for the RGB camera and change the RGB settings from auto to manual. The distance range meter helps us position the scanner so we know how far to hold it from the object. And what's great is at the back of the scanner, a colored light around the buttons will change color to match the distance meter. So at a quick glance at the scanner, it helps us keep the distance in the correct range. On the right side are basic commands to start a new scan, start and pause a scan, and this can also be operated from the touch panel on the back of the scanner. There's complete scan, undo, redo, clear, and exclude base, and a few options for the scanning modes. It's all in a user-friendly layout, which makes it easy to get started scanning. We'll take a look at some of the other features during the following scans. For the first scan, we're scanning the included test owl model. The owl is placed onto a turntable base that's manually turned, and the scanner is handheld and using these together makes it easy to scan all around the model. With the scan complete, we can quickly process the data with the one-click processing option. This will use the default settings to process the raw scan data 
into point cloud, then into a mesh, and then add the captured colors. For a quick test scan, the default one quick processing works well, and we have a nice looking scan model of the owl. On the left hand side, we can also backtrack from the color to the mesh model, point cloud, and all the way back to the raw data, and reprocess or edit with different settings if needed. So for more control over the one click processing, we can manually adjust the resolution, perform batch processing for multiple scans, and manually adjust settings for the mesh processing. Now on this model, as we only scanned it from the top, we don't have the underside scanned. So we'll take a second scan with the owl flipped over and capture the underside. When we have the raw data of the two scans processed to point cloud, we can click on point cloud merging and this will allow us to combine the models. In the merging layout, we have two options to either use auto merging or manual merging. For manual merging, we need to manually select points to help it align the two scans. Using manual merging is only really needed if auto doesn't give the desired results. What I did find was the auto merging to be working really well and a lot quicker than manual merging. For auto merging, just select the two scans and click on start. If we're happy with the result, we can click on yes and then exit the merging layout. It has now combined and created a single component of the two scans. But if we did need to go back and re-edit or replace a scan, we can click on unmerge, which will split it back to the two scans. So it's a really handy feature if we ever need to backtrack or readjust something. Now going back to the merge two scans, the data is processed into a mesh, then the scan color can be added. So with the mesh model complete and looking good, this is exported as a 3D file and there's options to choose from PLY, OBJ or STL. So we're going to take this exported STL of the OWL model and open it in Creality Print. Then we'll slice the file and send it to the printer. The finished print turned out well and it's a great way to quickly make a duplicate of a model. It's a fairly quick and easy process to go from a 3D scan to a physical 3D print. The next scan is of a mechanical fuel pump. It's a combination of capturing two scans with the turntable manually rotated. The scanning speed is fairly quick and easy with steady movements and I find the tracking to be working really well. And once the scans are complete, they are merged and processed within the software. What's interesting here is to compare these results with those from the older generation Lizard Scanner as the advancements in the newer Otter model reveal a dramatic improvement in scan quality. The difference is like night and day when viewed side by side. For the next scan we're creating a 3D model of a pipe to use as a reference in CAD software. Once the scan is complete, it's exported from Creality Scan as an STL and imported into CAD software. This process enables us to design and create an adapter from the 3D scan model. And with the scan model in CAD, we can easily design a part, verify the size, check the fit, or 3D print a part before proceeding with machining or fabrication. Using a similar approach to the previous scans for a larger item, we're using the scanner handheld while placing a car gearbox on a heavy duty turntable. This setup makes it easy to capture and scan around the gearbox ensuring no details are missed. The final scan turned out really well with a nice detailed model. And for the final scan of a sneaker, it involves two scans, one capturing the top side of the sneaker and the other side focusing on the underside. These scans are merged together to create a highly detailed model. The result is an impressive 3D model of the sneaker with exceptional quality and accuracy. Every contour, texture and underside grip of the sneaker was nicely captured and reproduced. The final model not only looks great, but also serves as a precise digital replica of the physical sneaker. If you're looking to create 3D models of objects, this scanner is the perfect tool for product design, reverse engineering and custom part creation. Overall, the CR Scan Otter is a powerful, efficient and high quality device that's sure to impress with its accurate and detailed 3D scans.